Hello. Welcome, welcome. So I had a few wooden signs that I wanted to chalk up today. So I figured why not go live while I did it? So I'm gonna see if anybody hops on here. But if not, I'll go ahead and start pretty soon and then for the replay there won't be too much of a lag on there. Um, but basically last night I prepared some signs and so about half of them I'm gonna be doing today. Um, they're a faux framed sign. So what that means, well some of them are, not all of them are. Basically I created a frame on them by um, staining them. I stained them front and back. You can see I got a little paint on that one. I need to sand it down and fix it. But um, then I went through and I taped it actually with this same tape here. I had to go through and label what everything was gonna be because I realized as I started doing the signs that the intentions of what they were going to turn into, I couldn't remember. So I started taping their locations and then once they dried onto the actual them because they're all kind of different sizes. So I wanted to make sure that I was putting the right thing on the right size. So I used the frog tape, which I highly recommend. It's the green one. It comes in a little, um, like a container that helps keep it sticky. I love it. That has been the number one tape that I like for painting. If I need to make sure that the lines stay clean, which really, if you're taking the time to paint anything, you want the lines to stay clean. So I think I first discovered it when we were painting one of the rooms around here and the way that it worked with the trim and everything was so much better than any of the blue that I feel like you typically normally see. And I wanna say they're around the same price, if not, they might be a dollar more or a dollar less, I forget, but frog tape, guys. Green, in a little container, use it. So that's what I used. This is the, I don't even know what size that is, but I just used it to tape around the edges. And as you can see, it created a nice clean line and I was a little bit nervous at first because if you have used tape before when you're painting, you know you're supposed to pull it off when it's still wet. But I was kind of nervous to do that and then end up risk not getting it in the same exact spot. Um, even though I used the edges to line it up, I didn't want it to end up creating a, like two different edges. So I left it on there and I put two coats of the paint on here before I pulled the paint off, or the tape off. And it's still, you can see how beautifully crisp and clean the lines are. So this is just a little bit of an easier way if you want to create that framed look but maybe don't want to, either don't have the materials like me, I didn't have the materials when I decided I wanted to make some signs to make a frame, plus this is a lot faster, um, a little bit easier, a little bit less labor intensive. And I did go ahead and stain through both sides. So like behind the white isn't really stained, I just kind of eyeballed about where the frame was gonna be and just did it to there. So what I used, you can use any kind of stain, but I really love this kind, general finishes. Um, this one's Antique Walnut. I actually got this to fix one of Steve's, some scratches on Steve's desk. We got um, his whole office suite from the ReStore and it just had some spots that needed to get touched up. Half of it was free though, so I mean, who can resist that? But it's a gel stain. This is the stuff that if you've seen on Pinterest before where people have redone like bathroom cabinets and stuff without having to sand it down, this is the kind of stain that they used. I have a friend who has used it for such a thing. She says that she really liked how it used. I cannot personally attest to that because I have not used it for refinishing something that's not raw wood. Um, I guess technically the desk was a little bit, I don't know. The spots that were worn down, I guess, were kind of like an unfinished, but it did blend nicely into where the stain had been. So anyway, it just is a lot easier to work with. I haven't actually, yeah, okay, I can pop it open. I haven't actually completely sealed this yet from last night, but you can kind of see it's a little bit more of like a jelly kind of consistency. Um, it has a very strong smell. So I'm glad yesterday was a little bit warmer than today because I definitely had the window open when I was working on it. But it just works so nicely. I just used an old washcloth and kind of applied it with that and then, um, no, I used a foam brush to apply and then I just kind of went back over and kind of cleaned it up with the cloth and it dried super, super nicely because I did a bunch of these and then I also did a few that are actually their chalkboard paint instead of where the white paint is. 
um, and by the time that I was finished with all of that, it was dry enough that I could go ahead and tape. So it made it nice that it wasn't like sit and wait for 24 hours or whatever to do it. And then the white color that I used, this is just the chalk paint that you can get at Walmart. Um, this is what I use a lot for my chalk paints just because it is available to me. There's a Walmart in my town. There's not a Michaels or an AC Moore or Hobby Lobby or anything that's not more than half an hour away. So I really like it. This one is one of the older jars that I've had, and I did notice that when I was using it, it was a lot thicker. Um, I don't know if you can see, like, see how it does, it's not really moving. It was really, really thick. I didn't try watering it down. I bet you that if you did, it probably would work fine. Um, I just rolled with it, literally, because I did use a small roller to do this. Um, I just feel like it gives a little bit of a nicer finish than the brushing, which actually I'm not, so this one I went back through with a brush. I don't think you're gonna be able to see the difference, but I can see a little bit more of my streaks with the brush than I can on this one where I rolled. So both I think look really great. Um, it's really just kind of personal preference as to which one you want to do. Hey, Missy. Um, I'm going to be using some of the transfers. It's not the same ones as the Craft Night transfers, but I've got a few Christmas ones I'm going to be putting on these signs. So I've got the ones like this that have the faux frame, and then I also did some that were just all white because what I want to do with these, um, I'm doing some Christmas stuff, and I really like the look of like grain sack. So I'm going to paint the edges, like I'm going to have the transfer more in the center, and then once that's all dry and good, I'm going to do some grain sack details on the side. So I won't be doing that part on the live because um, that one is a little bit more labor intensive and I'm not feeling that right now. I'm just going to do the transfers. So I guess to start out, I wanted to do this one first. This is a little bit of a bigger size of the ones that I have. Um, and what I'm actually going to do with it, this one is a non-Christmas one. I'm going to use this pantry transfer um so when i'm saying transfer these basically are like they're reusable they stick to whatever your project is um but then they peel back off and they come in sheets like this where it's a bunch of them attached to one another this particular one is a two-sheeter so it's for different pantry needs it's got different labels and stuff so if you want to label any of your containers um, so what you do is you cut that apart, which I need to grab my scissors from behind me. I'm bringing over my junk because there they are. See, it was just up too high. I just couldn't see it. So all you do is you just kind of cut along the lines um, and then you'll also see some of the other ones that I have, I actually cut into the transfer so that I can create a couple of different looks than what it is sent, what it was sent to me as. So just cut along. Um, so you heard me mention earlier that I did some of these as chalkboard signs, which I'm really excited about. I think they're going to be so super cute. Um, but I actually had to wait until way late tonight because you, when you're doing a chalkboard, you need to apply a wax. Um, there, you can use either the chalk couture ones that come in like a little chapstick tube, or you can also use um, Minwax has a wax that you can use, but you just want to apply it. It makes it easier when you are putting on the transfers um, to get them off of it. And then also the paste, you can clean it off. So if you wanted to reuse the chalkboard with another design on it, then you want to make sure that you wax it. So to kind of help protect my transfers and just make sure everything goes smoothly, I always like to wax it. So I waxed those. I did not wax these paint ones. So, oh no, you guys. Hmm. I think I'm just gonna roll with it. So this transfer fits great on my board. However, the little teeny bits of, which actually maybe it'll work if I do it like this. 
I just have to try something. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. So when I put the edges, hey Morgan, when I put the edges on the board, I noticed this for a couple of them because there's one other one that I'm, I'm gonna end up having to do something different than what I'd originally planned. Um, it cut off a little bit of the spacing for the transfers. So for this one, what I'm gonna do is basically the little like tabs at the end of the Y and the P kind of cut off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line it up with the Y first and then um, it'll basically just cut off the thing for the P, which I think will end up looking fine. And I'll show you a little trick that I discovered. Hmm. So I think the hardest part for me for transfers is making sure that they're lined up correctly because they're semi-see-through. Oh. I'm not sure if this will show or not. So see the solid places? It's not quite like a stencil. Do you see how that's like a really, really thin screen in there? Um, so it's kind of like a screen printing sort of thing a thing. Right. There we go, that is a lot more centered. I think the hardest part is trying to make sure that I have things lined up centered correctly. So what I have discovered is that if there is a part that I do not want to um, get the paste through, what I do is I will use a part of a transfer, so of the backing of it. So the one for the pantry one is kind of big, so I'm going to take it off of this other one that I cut down that's a little bit smaller. At least I think I'm going to. I can't quite find an edge. Dun, dun, dun. I'll try a different one. I've been using a lot of the Thanksgiving ones, so those ones have been super easy to get back off because I've been using them the first time sometimes gets a little bit difficult. So I'm just going to stick that back on the pantry one. So what you'll do um, the things that they're on, see how that's kind of shiny? There's a shiny side and then more of a matte side. The shiny side is always the side that you want your sticky part to be on. So what I will do is I'm just going to line it up perfectly, theoretically perfectly. I'm going to try and make it as close to it as I can. Um, to the, oops, to the bottom. So then what that is going to do is basically see the white through there. So it just makes it so that I'm not gonna accidentally end up getting paste bleeding through or sticking out in a way that I don't want it to. And then I'm just going to kind of like crease it down. And then um, you heard me say earlier, so the paste is erasable basically. So whatever does get on there, I'm still going to use that to hold my transfer when I'm done, but um, I can just wipe it off. So, got my wipes and everything. I'm prepared. So the color I'm going to use is one that I have not opened yet. Um, going for more of a kind of farmhouse neutral, and I really, really like the way that wood, white, and gray look together. I like it. I like a lot of stuff with black too. That's what I'm going to use for a few of the other signs. But I really like something about gray. I'm gravitating a lot more towards gray kind of colors. So this one's called Elephant Gray, and it's just a very light gray. Um, so here is for the color. I feel like that's pretty true to color. And then also just the consistency of what this is. Um, it's kind of like a. Uh, I don't know, it's sort of like a sticky, not really sticky, because it's not sticky. You know what it's like? It's kind of like really wet bread or biscuit dough. That's a very good description. That is what it's like. So what you're gonna do, this is a two fluid ounce jar. Um, this is the only size that they come in currently. And so what you're gonna do is just take 
you scoop some on here. And it's really nice because you can't really overdo it um, because you just scrape it along. Not yet, okay. If you are watching this later, I'm not sure if the comments, okay. Yeah, I don't think that, I think if you swipe the comments away, you should be able to see this pretty well. Um, but you're just going to spread the paste And then any excess that you have, once you have spread it all over, make sure that all of the parts of the transfer that you're trying to fill are filled in, then you go ahead and you just scrape the extra back into the jar. So I really like that because I feel like you're not wasting product. Um, now this would be different. You can use the transfers with paints as well and it would be a little different as far as how much you are using and such for that because you're not gonna be able to just scrape it back into your bottle. But that is one thing that I do very much enjoy about the paste. They're just really, really easy to work with. So when you go to pull your transfer off, one of the big things is, this is just one color, so it's keeping it so that everything is pretty, it's staying pretty wet, like it's not having much time to dry. Um, but if you're doing things that are more than one color or if the thing that you're, the transfer that you're using is on the bigger side and maybe some parts of it may have had the chance to dry, what you're gonna wanna do is dampen the paste again before you pull the transfer off. If you pull the transfer off beforehand, it's going to pull some of the chalk paste up with it. So what I have used is a lot of times I'll just dampen a paper towel and I just kind of spread it over it and I sort of push it into it so that it's not smudging it and then um, I'll pull it up from that. So then after all of the paste is spread out to the places that you wanna go, I am loving this, you just slowly remove the transfer. Oh, this is fantastic. Guys, I'm so bad at lettering things. I'm not even joking. Very nice. Okay, so I'm doing this in my dining room so I don't have a sink readily available. I have to go into the kitchen and leave you guys. So what I'm gonna do is I just brought, of course this one's bigger than what my cookie sheet is. This, all the transfers I've been doing so far have been a lot smaller. Um, so what you're gonna do is I always take it in and I put it sticky side down when I go to clean it. Right now though, I'm gonna leave it sticky side up. Um, and I rinse off the chalk paste in the sink, spray it down, kind of rub with my fingers, try and get as much of the residue off of the transfer as possible. Um, some end up looking just like they did when they came out of the package by the time that I'm done cleaning them. Other ones, it stains a little bit, especially the darker colors. No fear, it doesn't affect the transfer at all. It just doesn't look quite as bright and teal as it did before. Um, but, after you're done with that, then you're gonna wipe the non-sticky side and the sticky side with a, how am I missing, whatever, the Great Value brand, just in case if you're wondering. Um, you're gonna wipe it with an antibacterial wipe. This is what they recommend wiping it with in a pinch. When I have been out of these, I have also used a baby wipe, but I'm not going, it didn't mess anything up, but I'm not gonna make a regular habit of it because I just feel like a baby wipe has more of like oils and stuff in it. Um, but in a pinch, it worked. But antibacterial wipe, you wipe the front, you wipe the back, and then you, I just normally will spread out paper towels on the, the counter, and I, you wanna do it sticky side facing up, um, and you just let it air dry. But look at how cute that turned out. Beautiful. Did you see how fast that was too? Nice, right? So I'm horrible at hand lettering. I think that, um, I have mentioned that before. I'm really bad at it. And I actually, there is a letter box that I um, am working on refinishing. And I had initially put like a scripted hello and I like painted it on there. And it was one of those things where I just kept messing with it. I couldn't stop messing with it. And it just was getting to the point where it was looking worse and worse. And I just had to stop, step away from it. Well, that was maybe a week before I discovered the Chalk Couture transfers. So I actually recently just um, 
went back and painted over the hello like I had to sand it so that you couldn't see the like a ghosting of the other stuff um, and I have a hello transfer that is the exact look that I wanted for it so I'm gonna fix that have that listed in the Etsy shop soon um, all right, I'm gonna not do this one yet. I'm gonna do the gingerbread cookie one because this is another one I have to cut and I just wanna kind of roll through a little bit faster. Yeah, I've got, okay. I was thinking I was losing track of some of my stuff. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is, yeah, okay, I don't have a sugar and spice one. I was gonna say, I wanna show you a color too. Um, this particular one, I'm going to use black but I do have some available that I'm gonna be using for, um, I'm gonna do some red. So this transfer, this particular one, was one where it, it says fresh gingerbread cookies and it had been in one big square. Um, I actually cut it so that each word is on its own transfer, just because there were a couple of different layouts that I wanted to use and this just made it a lot easier to work with. So, if you have any troubles getting, my main issue with this right now is that I can't find the edge. You know when you get like a roll of duct tape or something and you can't get the edge to come up? That's what my problem is. Um, but if it, especially for larger ones, I feel like, the smaller ones I don't feel like I've had to do this as much, but you can warm, um, I guess kind of warm the stickiness by using a hair dryer on a low heat setting and just kind of spray. I ended up directing the air at the white part. I don't really know if there's a wrong way to do that. I think you could do it on the transfer too. But it just kind of loosens it up some. So this guy, I think, would look super cute um, above you know that space right above your stove? I think that this will look super cute there. I'm someone who likes to decorate all the rooms for Christmas. I have not decorated a bathroom yet though. I'm not against it. I just don't have anything. I haven't been inspired enough to decorate any of our bathrooms for Christmas. It's not something I'm really looking to do, but I'm certainly not against it. I feel like we decorated our um, bathrooms at home. We had like snowmen or something in there. So I am going to actually trim a little bit of this transfer because when I just tried to lay the other part next to it, it was too big. So that is one thing that I really do like about this is that there's no like wrong way to do it. You can adjust stuff. You don't have to... Oh, this might be a good thing to show you. So looking at the transfers online, I thought that they were more of like a vinyl, like maybe like a sturdy vinyl. And I guess maybe that is still what it is, but it's a lot more cloth-like. Oh, you're not gonna be able to see. I don't think it's in HD enough. It looks a little staticky up there. But there's like fibers, like it is a little bit more fabric-like than plastic-like, which I think is part of how they maintain their good shape and such that makes them wonderful for reusing. Right. I think what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna I'm gonna do cookies first and then I'm going to put gingerbread down. I might move cookies over a little bit too. There we go. So see, this is super easy. You really don't have to, I know a lot of the times, like, if you're not a naturally creative person, it can be intimidating almost to do, um, craft things like this, but I just love how easy this is to do because you really don't have to have any kind of special talent per se. 
Um, the most creative part, I think, is coming up with how you want to lay your transfers out. Right, again, I'm going to cut this because it was coming onto my cookies. Just perfect. So for this one, I'm going to use black. Um, and I might very well end up getting a little bit on the painted part. But if I do, I'm not going to stress about it because then I can show you how I can wipe it off. So again, the black. This one looks a little bit wetter to me. Um, I need to wipe off my squeegee. So there's different kind of squeegees that you can get. This one is the medium size one that I've been using. Um, this tends to be the one I gravitate towards. I don't have one of the big ones. The big one is, it has a handle on it. And it is really good if you have like some larger transfers. I haven't really worked with the larger transfers. Um where having something wider than this part would really be all that necessary. And I usually end up using, I like how t this one comes so much to a point. Um, I also have a one of the smaller ones, which is the first one I used because that was the first one I pulled out of the box. But um, it doesn't really matter. It's more personal preference. I just like that this one gives me a little bit more to work with, especially when it comes to detailing. Um, I did another sign that had three colors in it and having, being able to like, like one of the things it was holly berries. So to be able to do the red of the holly berry with just having it on the tip like that made it really nice. So my intention with these, I am making them permanent. So, oh, yep. I wiped off, I wiped some onto the painted part so I can show you how to clean that up. Um, so in order to do that, I am going to be sealing them. So I actually have not sealed any of my projects yet. I kind of have been waiting to do a bunch of them at once just because I feel like that's a little bit more productive because today I'm doing several projects, but before it's just been kind of one here or there. It hasn't been a bunch of them. So I have several things that I'm gonna be using as far as sealing them. Um, I have a spray sealant. I also have, which basically like you can use polyurethane. Um, you can use a few other things too. I've got a couple of Mod Podge jars, um, which are awesome because there's so many different finishes that you can use with that. One of the ones that I have that I actually am going to be using with the breadboards is a food safe one. So it basically, you can use it in the dishwasher, all that kind of stuff. So I am going to get the excess off of here and then I'll pull these two up and then I'll go ahead and show you how to clean up any mistakes that you might make when you get things off of their, off the beaten path you can see right on top of cookies, it went, whoops, it went off the transfer. So, hello to my viewer. I can't see who you are, but hello and welcome. Just doing some crafts today. So just slowly pull them up. So this one, I wish that I had shown it to you before I put the color on because I feel like now it kind of looks like it's just where the color is. So, Actually, you're not going to be able to see it on this anyway. Um, again, I'm just going to stick my dirty ones, my messy ones that I need to clean before I use again, over on my cookie sheet. Some metal cookie sheet. If you have a really big transfer, again, I haven't used a superiorly large transfer yet, um, but I saw the other day that cleanup is a little bit easier if you stick them to your shower wall. So in that case, it's like your shower wall is like your cookie sheet. Um, so this warm look, this is how this transfer is meant to look. You can especially see it on fresh. Um, and you can tell that when you look at the transfer because you'll be able to see a little bit more of like a speckling almost on them. 
So, example, see on the little medallions. Oops. There, you can see it on this, this one. Um, that speckling, that gives it kind of that, more of that distressed look. So, but that is also what will happen if it's not completely dry or if it, if some of it has dried, if it's not wet when you pull the transfer off. So, um, I actually did one thing where I didn't intend for it to be like that. I didn't realize how dry it had gotten. And I did the damp paper towel thing because it was the one that I was using where I had three different colors. So it was taking me a little bit longer. To clean this up, I'm just taking one of the antibacterial wipes. I'm just wiping along. Um, but anyway, I had, I had, you know, wet everything down again before I pulled it off. And it was just a couple of the spaces, I guess, just didn't get as much of the moisture pushed into it. So it pulled some of the color up. But I actually really liked how it looked. It looked a little bit more, it just looked like I distressed it. I did it on a wooden tray. So this is a darker color. I am probably going to end up touching this up a little bit with paint. Actually, this is, I think, I think what I was seeing was more so that it was just still wet. So it just wiped right off. Super easy. Um, I am going to move on to another one really quick and come back to this one to add the gingerbread part because I don't want to get, this part of the transfer is going to overlap just a little bit and I don't want it to end up pulling up. Hey, yes, I got a few of them because that's, this is one that I'm really hoping to do for December. Um, I'm gonna, I haven't tried with layering the transfers too much yet, but I was thinking it would be really cute to do like fam gingerbread families. But there's so, almost all of the ones I'm using today are from that transfer. All right, let's see. We'll do the sugar and spice one. And then you'll get to see a little bit of some color. Because I'm going to use red for that one. So just cleaning off my squeegee and I am going to use I decided I'm gonna use the bright red um, the other Christmas thing that I did I hadn't gotten red yet but I had hey Lauren I had brick which is just more of a brick red it's not as bright um, I kind of gravitate more towards this color just because a lot of my stuff, it's a lot more of like a country, it's just kind of more, I don't know, rugged, burlap-y kind of look. So I feel like a lot of the times the brick color goes a little bit more with the kind of decor that I choose, especially at Christmas time. Like my Christmas tree in our, um, in our living room is more of like a brick red tone rather than the bright red. So, but I'm thinking that for these guys, the bright red will be just perfect. So, opening it up. This is a brand new one for me. So remember, for the this is one of the ones that's an all white board. So, it is going to be grain sack on the side. So I will certainly post pictures um, later once I get, it'll probably be this weekend, once I get the grain sack parts added to it. But for now, it's just, I'm just gonna do the transfer part on it. So remove my little reminder label for what this one's gonna be. And now I am just going to try and line it up. And I think I'm going to use, I don't wanna draw on it, so. Ooh, I do also want to make sure this is the side I want to use with the one where it's framed out it's pretty obvious but this one I want to make sure that it's the smoothest side yep this is the one I want ah I can tell I'm starting to use lose daylight 
I'm not used to that yet. It feels so much later than what it is and it just makes, what I don't like is that I'm, I feel like I lose my productivity time because I feel like once it gets dark, these don't really feel like doing as much and it feels like it's a lot later in the day so it feels like you shouldn't be. I don't know. But, here we go. <clears throat> so for this one, I've got it all lined up. I'm really excited about the green sack ones. I think it's gonna be really, really cute once they're all done. And I'm just going to use um, painter's tape to mark these stripes, unless I happen to have a chance to go into Joann's or Michael's or something and try and find a rubber stamp pad. Because I saw something on Pinterest where someone used, um, they took a rolling pin and they wrapped cardstock around it so that you weren't attaching things directly to your rolling pin. And they, I don't think I showed you guys what this one is. Sugar and spice and everything nice. So this one is on like a Christmas, it's on a gingerbread one, but this could also be very adorable for a little girl's room. Cause you know the expression. Um, but, hold on, concentration is needed. But what they did is they got, um, it was basically like a big thing of rubber for making stamps and they cut it into strips. So some of them they had like three lines that were exactly the same size that they attached onto the rolling pin. So then you kind of just brush your paint onto it and you just roll it across your, um, your project. And then one of them they did like a thicker size. So I like that you can still customize it and it seems like it made it really, really easy um, without having to worry about taping everything. So I don't think I showed you the open package, but here's the red one. Hey Jenny, no, you didn't miss it. Um, I believe that it is 30 times is what the average is. Brianna, if you're still watching me, if you could double check me on that one. Um, but I have not gotten up to 30 yet on any of mine, but I have used, um, especially the Thanksgiving ones, several times now because I've been making lots of projects with those and then if Brianna does not verify that Jenny once I hop off of here I'll get you a, a firm answer but I do believe that it is 30 and the biggest part with making sure that you get the maximum use out of them too is definitely with care when you are cleaning them um just making sure that you're and applying them too really because you don't want to stretch them um i haven't used anything on glass yet that is one of my next projects i'm really excited and i'm gonna have to figure out how to hook set up in the garage because i really want to share with you guys when i'm doing it um i have a really unique window yeah jenny so to clean them, it's super, super easy. Um, oops, hold on. Let me squeegee this on down and I'll show you my cookie sheet that I've been sticking things on. So I just have this one old cookie sheet that I have been using for mine. Um, and you just, you rinse with water first. Um, normally what I'll do, I have everything sitting on here sticky side up right now but when I clean them, I will put them sticky side down and then I kind of just hold this in the sink and I spray it down with water. I kind of use my fingers to kind of brush it around some. Um, if you've got like a soft bristle, bristle brush or even like a toothbrush or something, you can kind of use that to sort of work some of the colors off. Um, and then you end up using antibacterial wipes and you use those to go ahead and you wipe the um, non-sticky side and the sticky side. So you wanna do both sides with that. And then you let them dry. What I'll normally do is I just spread out a paper towel on my counter and then you just put them like this. You put them where it's sticky side up and you just let them dry. And then once they're dry, so far I've been reattaching them to, oops, that's one that I need to wipe again. Um, if you guys missed my little trick for why I have paste on my 
transfer backing, you'll want to go back and watch. Um, it might be a little hard to explain, but visually seeing it, you'll love it. Um, but then I've just been sticking them back onto the transfers. You can see how it's shiny on one side and then it's more matte on the other. You stick them back on the shiny side. Um, and let me see. I don't know if my... Nope, it's on. I'm going to turn my light on. I'm hoping that's not going to mess with my lighting too much. But I can certainly see that the sunset is affecting how much you can see of me. Um, so once they're dry, you just stick them back on that. Another thing that, another way that you can store them, which is what I am looking into um, as soon as I can get to a Michaels or one of the craft stores, um, is getting a larger photo album. And so then you basically like the stick, not the sticky, the shiny covers that you stick your photos into, um, that basically acts like the shiny side, like the shiny side of these, so of the backing. So then you don't need your backings anymore and people will just stick like black paper or any color really, but black is, I guess the darkest or whatever to see easily so you can see what your transfers are. But you just stick your transfer to that cover. I got the notification on my iPhone that my husband was leaving work and I was like, I don't know if he saw that I was live, but I am either about ready to get a phone call. So, um, so you can store them either in a photo album like that or in your back onto the original backings and then all of them I've taken them out of their plastic covers that they come in um, for this just because I didn't want it to be loud on the screen but they come in like little sleeves when they're sent to you so I just have been sticking mine back in there once I cut them up they don't fit in there quite the same exact way but they all stay together this one I have been a little bit more distracted on um, I do not have a wet paper towel in here and I'm not going to get up right now to go get one so we're gonna see what happens I hope that answers your question Jenny if you need clarification at all please let me know because I know I got distracted a couple times in the middle there so don't forget scrape as much as you can I actually don't really have to scrape as much as you can, but I want to save as much as I can. Right back into your jar, and then I just wipe my squeegee off. I try and stay on top of like wiping it off when it's wet just because it's a whole lot easier to get the product off of it. But even if it dries a little bit, it still comes off pretty well. Um, when I did the gray earlier, I didn't wipe it off until I did the black, so. Moment of truth, guys. Fingers crossed. We'll see if I did okay or not. All right. So far, it is looking like it's just the wear that it's supposed to have. So I think I did okay. Oh, and one other thing is when you're cleaning it, just in case if you missed this when I said it earlier, this color right now, the red, um, especially because I'm not rinsing it off right immediately right now. Um, it might stain a little bit. If you've got a soft bristle brush, that'll kind of help get some of the color off. But a couple of mine, especially with the darker colors, um, have stained just ever so slightly. So don't be afraid if you see that happening. Um, it doesn't ruin your transfer by any means. You can certainly still use it. It's not like the color bleeds or anything. My cookie sheet's filling up. All right, let me go ahead and show you guys this one. Super cute. Now how adorable is that gonna look with some grain sack stripes on the ends? So pretty. Dun, 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 dun. Not sure if everyone that's watching now was watching earlier. This is the first sign that I did this afternoon. Non-Christmas related. This is the pantry sign. Used elephant gray on there. 
Oh, and one side note too, if you were watching when I was saying what paint that I used, so I used the color Plaster for the Waverly Chalk Paint, and I actually thought because, I mean, it looks kind of more of like it's like a creamy or like an off-white, it might not be like bright, clean white, but I really, really like this color because I don't feel like it's, um, it's not, it doesn't look off-white to me, but it's not like for wooden sides and stuff. I just feel like this white is really, really good. All right. We're going to do milk and cookies, and then I think I'm going to hop off here because the last two signs that I want to do are ones where I'm going to need to. Oh, no, we've got to finish the gingerbread sign. I'll do milk and cookies just to make sure for sure that it's dry, and then... Um, which it should be. I mean, really the stuff dries pretty fast, but just because the other transfer is going to be going on top of it a little bit. So again, guys, this, so this is the transfer that I've been using, um, that has the, so this is where the gingerbread cookie one was. It was all just one big square and then sugar and spice was down here. So those are the ones that I've already cut out. Um, and then the other parts, it's the gingerbread people. So you can see the little girl with her skirt and then the boy, I guess, with his pants, maybe no pants, who knows? Um, and then there's all of the little parts that you can layer on top of them. So you can, you can layer. You just wanna make sure that it's dry in between so that you're not pulling stuff off on the back of your transfers. So I am going to cut this out and then for this sign, I'm going to do um, black, this one, and I'm going to do red on, I've got to do another sign like this on the white that's going to have the green sack. I'm going, I've got my iPad in front of me, I'm going to shoot my husband a message to let him know that I'm live, because he has tried calling me again. Let him know I'm not being super, super rude. All right. So this one's super cute. It says, we go together like milk and cookies. If anybody that's watching now is someone that maybe wasn't watching at the beginning or you don't know what the heck I'm doing or if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask. I just figured I had a couple of signs that I wanted to knock out this afternoon. I put Drew down for a nap. I had a little bit of time before I needed to get some things ready for our small group tonight. So I figured I come on here and hop on live. It's kind of a weird time, but I'm seeing more and more of you hop on. So say hello. Tell me what you're up to. Have any fun plans for the weekend? My husband is off this weekend, so I'm pretty excited about that. He works um, in different shifts, and it varies. So he is not normally off on the weekends, but he's off all weekend with us, and we don't really have any super specific plans for anything that we're doing. Um, I'm potentially having a craft night tomorrow. I was actually supposed to have a show tomorrow, like a vendor event, but it got rescheduled last minute, last week. So I figured I'd do an add an option for a date for a craft night and see if it worked for anybody. But it was kind of late notice, so. That one may or may not be happening, but for sure there is one happening on um, Thursday. So if you're local to Denton, Maryland, come see me. I'm going to have everything set up. It's basically like a paint night. You know how paint nights you come, you eat, you have fun. Yes, um, the only thing that was not in Build a Gingerbread Man was the pantry sign. So that one was a little bit earlier. I'm not sure if you saw that or not, but this is the only one that I've used so far that has not been in the gingerbread man one. 
So I really like it because I feel like there's a lot of things that you can use. Um, and then if you wanted to like make this so it just said milk and cookies, you can. You don't have to fill out every little part. So yes, Lois, everything so far is the gingerbread man one. Um, oops. And I have a few of those available. So if you are local to me, I can probably get it to you, even if you're not really, I can honestly probably ship it to you a little bit faster than what you would get it if you ordered it directly from my website. So just let me know if that's something you're interested in. I got you covered. Oh, this is super cute. And I just realized that I meant to do this in black and I definitely did it in red, but I don't, I regret nothing. It looks so cute. I'm glad I messed up. Look at how cute that is. I love it. So pretty. I really, really like this. Um, definitely am happy that I did it in the red instead of the black. So I think that that might be the last. No, I need to do gingerbread man or gingerbread over here. Um, I don't remember what I was talking about before I got excited about how cute that one looked. I'm not near Bethesda. I'm actually on the Eastern shore. I'm really close to Delaware. Um, but we're on the Eastern shore. I'm in Denton. So if she travels to the beach that away, she'll probably re remember like a... McDonald's. <laughs> That's normally what it is. Like if you're passing through on the way to the beach, there's a McDonald's. Um, and I live about a mile away from that McDonald's. All right. So you see what I'm saying with how that overlapped? Just a little bit, but it was enough that I did not want to risk trying to do it beforehand with everything on there at the same time. So, yes, Lois, it's a really, really cute one. I'm very, very pleased with it. At first I got it mainly because I wanted it to try and do um, like a family make and take, like create your family in gingerbread men. I thought that would be adorable. And I'm loving all of the little like side transfers in that aren't necessarily the gingerbread men. I think they're really cute. So I came up very close to the top of that one, but I was paying a little bit more attention this time. So we're going to see if I can do this completely clean without having to clean up any of my mistakes. Y'all, mm, Jesus is keeping me humble this week, I tell you. I have a funny story to tell you. And my husband's driving right now, and so unless he watches to the very end of this replay, I know he won't know this now because I, I didn't tell him this. So we did a Friendsgiving getaway with um, five of my super close girlfriends and their significant others. We have all been friends since we were five years old. We are all creeping up on or already 30. So quarter century of friendship right there. Um, and we had an absolute blast. We went up to Davis, West Virginia it was so much fun. We just rented a big cabin. Um, I'm the only one so far with a kid, but we found out while we were there the very first night, it's been one week now that we found out um, one of the girls is expecting and I'm super stoked. But we just all went up, had this great time. We made an entire Thanksgiving dinner ourselves. None of our mamas were there. We figured it out. We were all really, really impressed with ourselves. So we get home on Monday and I had dinner basically. There are leftovers from um, Thursday that we were going to be eating on Monday when we got back. I figured I just have to heat it up. No big deal. Well, I decided that I wanted to add some macaroni and cheese to the menu. So I just did like a little thing of macaroni and cheese. It was fine. Ooh, hold on. Hold up. Don't get 
two of your sticky sides together. It could be tragic. I saw that starting to happen, so I had to rectify it. So I'm trying to make this macaroni and cheese, right? And everything's going great. I'm boiling the noodles and we have a gas stove, okay? So there's, there's flame involved, there's some fire. And I definitely called our macaroni, the macaroni box on fire. It was empty and it had fallen over and I didn't really realize it. And all of a sudden I smelled smoke. And sure enough, there it was on fire. So I had to, <laughs> I think Steve was walking through the kitchen when I did this too. That's the really funny part is that he still didn't know this happened. So he, um, he, Lois, I just read the part about knowing how to cook and that just cracked me up because I'm talking about lighting a macaroni box on fire. But I texted the girls and I was like, a picture of the burnt box. And I was like, so I definitely just called a macaroni box on fire. I was like, I think Jesus needed to keep me humble. I was getting too prideful about how well we did with making dinner. So another funny part of that story that I really just realized right now, I have a smoke detector that is like super, super sensitive, but I really think it's mainly just sensitive to me. Um, a couple of our, of our friends live a few hours away and when they come to visit, they stay with us. And a lot of the times, um, Dennis will cook while he's here, which is awesome. And I had been telling him about how the smoke detector was like super finicky and it just liked to go off randomly. And so the in the morning he was making bacon and Steve and I were still in bed and we got, we went downstairs and he was like, yeah, I was in the middle of making the bacon. And I started thinking like, oh no, this is going to wake them up. <sighs> it did not. So he like kind of gave me this look of like, yeah. And then I realized the smoke detector didn't go off. So he's making it sound like I really just burn things all the time, but I don't. But the time when I actually catch a macaroni box on fire, the smoke detector doesn't go off. So explain that one to me. Oh man, now I kind of want to tell Steve because that's kind of funny, but I haven't, I haven't admitted to Steve yet that I caught a macaroni box on fire. Cause you know, trying to keep some of my pride, some of my pride intact. But all right guys, so we just made a whole bunch of signs. I'm just gonna show them all again before I hop off of here. Fresh gingerbread cookies, super cute with this one. Um, I think I'm gonna put a, a hanger on the back of it, hang it right in that little space that's above a stove where it's just kind of empty. Super cute for Christmas. Sugar and spice and everything nice. This would also be really cute in that little space. Just saying. And then we've got the pantry one, which I'm loving the wood white and gray with this. I think it's super, super cute. And what did I do with my milk and cookie one? Did I lose it? I had one more and it said we go together like milk and cookies and it was red. Apparently I've lost it, but that was the, late, the latest one that I did before I finished up this one. So if you're watching this in the replay, you've seen it. You're good. All right, guys, so that's it. I think I'm probably gonna hop on here more often when I am doing some of these, just hang out and chat with you guys and answer any questions that you've got. Um, but yeah, so I hope that you have a great Friday night. I'm gonna go get ready for our small group, make some cookies. Bye.